Like any piece of machinery, parts in a gun can either wear out or break. Let's tear down the Beretta 80 series frame and show you how to pull these parts out so that you can replace them. Now the first thing we need to do is remove these grip panels. So using a good gunsmith screwdriver, we'll take these off. And there is a difference between a gunsmith screwdriver and like a regular hardware store or Harbor Freight screwdriver. Your gunsmith screwdrivers fit screws a lot better. So now there's screws off. You'll see there's a couple of uh, lock washers. This one's still in there. So be careful not to lose your little lock washers there. Now I'm going to show you the first difference between an 84 and an 85. On an 85, we have a magazine disconnect here. So when you don't have a magazine in there, the gun will not go off. So you can see when a magazine goes in and pushes up, it allows that trigger bar to move up and then engage the sear. And then as you squeeze, you can see the hammer pulls back. But without that magazine in there, you can see it will not engage the sear. Before we get any farther, I'm going to show you the other difference between the 84 and the 85. Everything else is pretty much the same. It's just these two things. And the other one is the magazine release itself. Now the magazine release on the 84 is a lot like the 92 series, but on the 85 it is quite different. And you can see here it is not reversible. So you'll see this button here and there's actually a roll pin right here that we'll need to remove to get this out. And there's no place on the other side for it to actually go. So it is only a right-handed magazine release. So I'm going to start at the front of the gun with the slide release lever. So we know from taking the slide off that you've got to push in and rotate the lever. So if we actually do this and go the other way, now it's free to actually move. And we'll just pull that out just like that. Now we're going to work a little farther back on the frame and take out the trigger. But to do that, we're going to need to remove the takedown lever, which also holds the trigger spring, which also holds this button for the takedown lever. So we need to be really careful to do this because when we remove the takedown lever, that spring is going to want to jump out. So you're really going to want to make sure you cover this up really well. I like to put my thumb right here. And then we're just going to lift up on this. Now you can see here's the takedown lever and the takedown lever spring came with it. And there's the trigger spring. But now that that's taken out, we can take out the button. Now in order to remove the trigger, we're going to need to take out the trigger bar. But as you can see, we're going to have a problem here because that safety is in the way. To remove the safety, we're going to need to drive out a little pin right here so that this wing can come off. Now to get that pin out, we're going to use a 1 16th inch roll pin starter punch. Now a starter punch is going to be long enough to drive that pin out. So I'm going to put my punch in here. And start driving that pin out. And you can see it doesn't take long before that pin will come loose. So from here, I'm just going to pull my punch out and there's that roll pin. So from here, I can just lift up on the wing. You can see I'm just going to rotate it around, but you can pull that all the way off. We'll pull it all the way off in a minute. Now we should be able to pull up on the front of the trigger bar. Now we got to be careful because this is an 85 and we have this magazine disconnect here. And then underneath, you can also see there's a trigger bar spring as well. So if we just pull up here and you can see 
we're completely disconnected from that trigger. There's nothing holding that trigger in, and I still have this spring right there. So let's deal with this magazine disconnect. Again, if you have that 84, you don't have this problem. But we're just going to pick up on that leg of the spring. And then now I can rotate my trigger bar around. And out of the way, you can see it's a pain. And then slide down, the trigger bar falls free. So now let's pick that up. While we're here, let's remove a couple of the small parts here. We'll remove the trigger release lever. You just kind of pull that up. The magazine disconnect spring, which just kind of slides straight out. And then we'll do the trigger bar spring, which kind of just pulls right out there. Now, finally, I'm going to remove the safety wing. And with that, we're completely done the right hand side of the gun. If we flip it over, you'll see that we can pull out the safety. Plus, there's a couple of pins here and then the magazine release. Now, this trigger is just basically flapping around. So I'm just going to rotate that out and pull it out. I'm going to need to be really careful when I pull out the safety lever because there is a detent that's under spring pressure. Now to remove this, I'm going to need to push the wing down and cock the hammer. And then I'm going to be pushing on this side of the wing. And you notice I'm going to have my thumb here. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing because I'm trying to make sure I don't shoot that detent across the room. And then slowly push and remove that wing. Now I got this wing in my hand and you can see the detent there. So I'm just going to rotate this around and there's the detent. And if we shake a little more, there's the spring. The one thing that we need to be careful of is this hammer is cocked. So therefore there is pressure onto the mainspring and I don't have a trigger or the safety to decock the hammer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trip the sear to bring the hammer home. Now I'm going to put my finger on the hammer here. And right here is the sear in this hole. I'm just going to push the sear out of the way and bring the hammer home. Now that relieves the spring tension that's on the main spring. I want to relieve the pressure onto the hammer. To do that, I'll need to remove the mainspring. Now, we're going to remove the mainspring cap pin here using a 3 32 inch roll pin starter punch. And the starter punch is just enough to remove that pin. Now, you do not want to remove your punch right now because that's holding the mainspring cap. You're going to put your thumb over that, then remove your pin, and then slowly relieve that pressure. Then I can pull the mainspring cap, and there's the guide and the guide spring. So as you can see, the hammer has no spring pressure on it. But if you do cock it back, the sear will still engage because that's under spring tension. Now, as you'll see in the picture, the sear is up here into the actual mag well. To remove the spring tension on the sear, we'll have to remove this bottom pin. Now on the 85, you'll see this is where your magazine disconnect slides on. On your 84s, it'll just be a roll pin. So in here, I'm just going to push that pin out. And you'll see my punch is holding the spring. Now when I remove my punch, the spring tension will come off of the sear. The spring won't come out because it's still being held in place by the sear pin. And now we can remove 
the sear pin, which will release the sear spring and the sear. To remove the sear pin, I'll use a 3 seconds inch punch. As you can see, my punch is holding the sear in. So we'll turn the frame upside down here and you can see that sear is just flopping around on the pin. So while this is here, I'm just going to pull my punch and I'll just kind of pull that out. Now if the sear spring came with it, we'll just separate it. Sometimes they just fall free. Now that we have the sear out, let's take out the hammer. It's a real simple process. All we need to do is push out the hammer pin on the right hand side of the frame. And just using a 1 8 inch punch, you push it out and there's the hammer pin. So now we can just lift the hammer from the frame. There's a lot of small parts in this next area. Right in here, we have two small springs and the hammer catch. It's all being held in place by these two pins right here. And we need to be careful because those springs are small, they're gonna to try to fly around on you. So we're gonna to try to capture everything, put our hand over top of this stuff. So using a 1 16th inch roll pin punch, we're gonna remove the rear pin. Now there's no springs that are on the roll pin, so it's safe to pull or punch out. And you'll see that is just holding the back side of the ejector in. For this next pin, we're gonna use a standard punch. It's not a roll pin, it's just a regular pin. So you can see it comes out pretty easy. So we're gonna carefully pull this punch out and try not to have these springs fly around. So I'm gonna put a finger up in here and my fingers around the top like this. And then right in here, you can see our first spring. See if we can do this without dropping it. And there's our hammer stop right there. And we can pull the ejector out now. You can see there was our second small spring. And now with the exception of the magazine release, this frame is stripped down. Let's remove the mag release. We're going to start off with a 1 16th inch roll pin starter punch and we're going to drive this pin right here through the frame and it's going to come out through the mag well. Now we're going to be really careful pulling this punch out because that roll pin has probably moved far enough to let us remove the mag release. Now I'm going to put my thumb on the mag release. I'm going to push in slightly here and I'm going to remove my punch. And right there, right here we can see that the mag release is actually loose. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove that detent and the spring. You can see right there is the detent and the spring. Now finally, we can remove the mag release from the frame. To do that, we're going to kind of push this thing forward. And once you can't go any farther, you just simply rotate and pull out. Now we still have that pin in the frame and to remove it, we're going to use a 1 16th inch roll pin punch. We're going to put it down into the hole and just give it another tap and there's the pin. The frame is completely disassembled with the exception of the grip screw bushings. 
There's a special tool to remove grip screw bushings that most people don't have, so I don't like to show that. Thank you for joining me. Stay safe out there, and I look forward to seeing you in the reassembly video.